In your 2005 book titled The Singularity is Near, you predicted that the singularity will happen in 2045. Mm. So now, 18 years later, do you still estimate that the singularity will happen on uh, 2045? And maybe first, what is the singularity, the technological singularity, and when will it happen? Singularity is where computers really change our view of what's important and change who we are. But we're getting close to some salient things that will change who we are. A key thing is 2029, when computers will pass the Turing test. And there's also some controversy whether the Turing test is valid. I believe it is. Uh, most people do believe that, but there's some controversy about that. But Stanford got very alarmed at my prediction about 2029. I made this in 1999 in my book. The Age of Spiritual Machines. Right. And then you repeated the prediction in 2005. In 2005. Yeah. So they held an international conference, you might have been aware of it, uh, of AI experts in 1999 to assess this view. So people gave different predictions and they took a poll. It was really the first time that AI experts worldwide were polled on this prediction. Uh, and the average poll was 100 years. 20% uh, believed it would never happen. And that was the view in 1999. 80% believed it would happen, but not within their lifetimes. There's been so many advances in AI uh, that the poll of AI experts has come down over the, the years. So a year ago, uh, something called Meticulous, which you may be aware of, assesses different types of experts on the future. They again assessed what AI experts then felt, and they were saying 2042. For the Turing test. For the Turing test. <laughs> so it's coming down. And I was still saying 2029. Yeah. A few weeks ago, they again did another poll, and it was 2030. So uh, AI experts now basically agree with me. I haven't changed at all. I've stated with 2029. Um, and AI experts now agree with me, but they didn't agree at first. So Alan Turing formulated the Turing test, and... Right, now, what he said was very little about it. I mean, the 1950 paper where he had articulated the Turing test, he, he, there's like a few lines that uh, talk about the Turing test, um, and it really wasn't uh, very clear how to administer it. And and he said if if they did it in like fifteen minutes, that would be sufficient, which I don't really think is is the case. These large language models now, some people are convinced by it already. I mean, you can talk to it and have a conversation with you. And you can actually talk to it for hours. Um, so it, it requires a little more depth. There's some problems with large language models, which we can talk about. Um, but some people are convinced by the Turing test. Now, if somebody passes the Turing test, what, what are the implications of that? Does that mean that they're sentient, that they're conscious or, or not? It's, it's not necessarily clear what the implications are. Anyway, I, I believe 2029, that's six, seven years from now, uh, we'll have something that passes the Turing test and a valid Turing test, meaning it goes for hours, not just a few minutes. Can you speak to that a little bit? What is your formulation of the Turing test? You've, you've proposed a very difficult version of the Turing test, so what, what does that look like? Basically, it's just to assess it over several hours um, and also have uh, a human judge that's fairly sophisticated on what computers can do and can't do. Um, if you take somebody who's not that sophisticated, or even a, a average engineer, uh, they may not really assess various aspects of it. So you really want the human to challenge the system. Exactly, exactly. On its ability to do things like common sense reasoning, perhaps. That's actually a key problem with large language models. They don't do uh, 
these kinds of uh, tests that would involve assessing uh, chains of reasoning. Um, but you can lose track of that. If you, if you talk to them, they actually can talk to you pretty well, mm -hmm. and you can be convinced by it. But it's somebody that would really convince you that it's a human, uh, whatever that takes. Maybe it would take days or weeks, um, but it would really convince you that it's human. Um, large language models uh, can appear that way. You can read conversations and they appear pretty good. There are some problems with it. It doesn't do math very well. You can ask, well, how many legs did 10 elephants have? And they'll tell you, well, okay, each elephant has four legs, and it's 10 elephants, so it's 40 legs. And you go, okay, that's pretty good. How, how many legs do 11 elephants have? And it, they don't seem to understand the question. Do all humans understand that question? No, that's a key thing. I mean, how advanced a human do you want it to be? But we do, we do expect a human to be able to do multi-chain reasoning, uh, to be able to take a few facts and put them together, not perfectly, uh, and we see, we see that you know in a lot of polls that people don't do that perfectly at all. But um, so it's not it's not very well defined. But it's, it's something where it really would convince you that it's a human. Is your intuition that large language models will not be solely the kind of system that passes the Turing test in twenty twenty nine? Do we need something no, else? I think, no, I think it will be a large language model, but they have to go beyond what they're doing now. Uh, I think we're getting there. And, and another key issue is if somebody actually passes the Turing test validly, I would believe they're conscious. And then not everybody would say that. So, okay, we can pass a Turing test, but we don't really believe that it's conscious. That's a whole other issue. Um, but if it really passes the Turing test, I would believe that it's conscious. Uh, but I don't believe that of uh, large language models today. If it appears to be conscious, that's as good as being conscious, at least for you, in some, <laughs> in some sense. I mean, consciousness is not something that's scientific. Uh, I mean, I believe you're conscious. But it's really just a belief, and we believe that about other humans that, that at least appear to be conscious. Um, when you go outside of shared human assumption, uh, like are animals conscious? Some people believe they're not conscious. Some people believe they are conscious. And would a machine that acts just like a human be conscious? I mean, I believe it would be. But th but that's really uh, a philosophical belief. It's not a th you you can't prove it. I can't take an entity and prove that it's conscious. There's nothing that you can do that would be that would indicate that. It's like saying a piece of art is beautiful. You can say it. Multiple people can experience a piece of art as beautiful, uh, but you can't prove it. But it's also an extremely important issue. Yes. I mean, imagine if you had something where nobody's conscious, the the world may as well not exist. Um, and so some people, like say Marvin Minsky, um, said, well, consciousness is not logical, it's not scientific, and therefore we should dismiss it. And any, any, anti, any talk about consciousness is just, not to be believed. But when he actually engaged with somebody who was conscious, he actually acted as if they were conscious. Mm -hmm. He didn't ignore that. He acted as if consciousness does matter. Exactly. Whereas he said it didn't matter. Well, that's Marvin Minsky. Yeah. <laughs> He's full of contradictions. But, but that's true of, of a lot of people as well. Um, but to you, consciousness matters. But to me, it's, it's very important. But... Uh, but I would say it's not a scientific issue. Uh, it's a philosophical issue. And people have different views. And some people believe that anything that makes a decision is conscious. So your light switch is conscious. Its level of consciousness is low, not very interesting, but, but that's a consciousness. 
uh, and anything. So a computer that makes a more interesting decision, still not at human levels, but it's also conscious and at a higher level than your light switch. Uh, so that's one view. Uh, there's many different views of what consciousness is. So if uh, a system passes the Turing test, it's not scientific, but uh, in issues of philosophy, things like ethics start to enter the picture. Do you think there would be, we would start contending as a human species about the ethics of turning off such a machine? Yeah, I mean, that's definitely come up. Hasn't come up in reality yet, but yet. But I'm talking about 2029. It's not that many years from now. Um, and so, what are our obligations to it? Uh, it has a different. I mean, a computer that's conscious is, has a little bit different uh, connotations than a human. Uh, we have a continuous consciousness. We're in an entity that. Uh, does not last forever. Um, now, actually, a significant portion of humans still exist and are therefore still conscious. Um, but anybody who is over a certain age doesn't exist anymore. That wouldn't be true of a computer program. You could completely turn it off and, and a copy of it could be stored and you could recreate it. And so it has a different type of uh, validity. Uh, you could actually take it back in time. You could eliminate its memory and have it go over again. I mean, it has a different kind of connotation than humans do. Well, perhaps you can do the same thing with humans. It's just that we don't know how to do that yet. Yeah. It's possible yeah. that we figure out all of these things on the machine first. But that doesn't mean the machine isn't right. conscious. I mean, if you look at the way people react, say 3CPO or other uh, machines that are conscious in movies, uh, they don't actually present how it's conscious, but we see that they are a machine and people will believe that they are conscious and they'll actually worry about it if they get into trouble and so on. So 2029 is going to be the first year when a, a major thing happens. Right. And that, that will shake our civilization to start to consider the role of AI well, in this world. Yes and no. I mean, this one guy at Google claimed that the machine was conscious. But that's just one person. Right. When so it starts to happen at scale. Well, that's exactly right. Because most people have not taken that position. I don't take that position. I mean, I've used... Uh, different things um, uh, like this, and they don't appear to, to me to be conscious. As we eliminate various problems of, of these large language models, uh, more and more people will accept that they're conscious. So when we get to 2029, more, uh, I think a, a large fraction of, of people will believe that they're conscious. Uh, so it's not gonna happen all at once. Uh, I believe it would actually happen gradually, and it's already started to happen. 